I want to take a very quick look at predicting single replacement reactions. So first off, we're going to kind of review how the um, single replacement reactions look, so you can tell one when you see one. But then we have to figure out, well, which chemical is actually getting replaced? So that's the little action we have down here in our corner is a demonstration we did at Christmas where we have a silver nitrate solution and we put in copper metal and that was a single replacement reaction. So let's look at that more closely. Then remember the pattern for a single replacement does kind of fit other ones we've seen where there are two chemicals on the left side, two chemicals for our products. But the difference here was one of these is an element and a compound turns into an element and a compound. And that's what makes it you know, recognizable as single replacement. And the clue here is the element that we have, does it turn into a positive ion or does it turn into a negative ion? And in this case, we know copper does turn into a copper 2 plus or copper 1 plus ion. So because it's a positive ion, it's going to replace the other positive ion. So we can tell what it's going to replace. Copper replaces silver. So copper becomes a copper ion, and silver ion becomes silver metal, and that's where we're going to get our double replacement. So let's practice. Aluminum metal is placed in a solution of zinc chloride. So we can go ahead and, and write out a little bit. We know that aluminum metal just be Al, and we have zinc chloride, so we know zinc is 2 plus. And we know that chloride is Cl minus, so we know the compound ZnCl2. Now, since aluminum does become aluminum plus, aluminum plus 3, but we know it's a positive ion, then we know it's going to be replacing the zinc. So when we get done, we're going to have aluminum chloride, so Al3 plus and Cl minus will be AlCl3. And the positive ion that's replaced becomes neutral. So we have aluminum plus zinc chloride becomes aluminum chloride plus zinc metal. And we have to go back and balance. We have three chlorides on the right. We have two chlorides on the left. So we're going to balance by putting a two in front of this and a three in front of this. Now we have three zincs, three zincs, two aluminums, two aluminums. And that is our balanced equation. We can go back and do the uh, ionic and net ionic equation, but if we're just trying to get our basic equation, we say, okay, since we know aluminum turns into a positive ion, it's going to replace this positive ion. So aluminum is going to go from neutral to positive, and our zinc is going to go from positive to neutral. Second reaction. We have our nickel metal and it's placed in a solution of hydrochloric acid. So we know that nickel metal, we'd write that as Ni neutral. But again, we say, okay, nickel, we know nickel turns into Ni2+. So because we know it becomes a positive ion, it's going to replace the positive ion in our reactants. We have hydrochloric acid, which we know is HCl. So we know it's the H that's going to get uh, replaced. So this right now, this is H in the plus charge, and it's going to change into H that's neutral, which we say, okay, hydrogen is one of our diatomic elements. So the reaction is going to become nickel ion plus chloride. So nickel 2 plus and Cl minus would be NiCl2. And hydrogen neutral will become H2. And now we go back and balance. And we say, okay, we have two chlorines, so we'll need two here. That gives us two H's, two H's, this is balanced. So we have nickel plus two HCl's turns into nickel chloride plus H2. Because nickel becomes a positive ion, we know it's going to replace the positive H+. Now we have chlor fluorine gas. Okay, so fluorine is one of our diatomic elements, so F2. is placed in a solution of potassium iodide. We know that potassium is K plus, iodide is I minus, so the compound is Ki. And we have to think ahead. Well, we know fluoride, F minus, so fluorine become a negative ion. So since it becomes negative ion, then it's going to be replacing the iodide, the negative ion in this case. 
So the fluoride is going to show up as one of our products, replacing the iodide. So we're going to have potassium ions, we're going to have fluoride ions. And the negative ion has become neutral. So our neutral becomes negative and our negative becomes neutral. And we know that iodine, again, is one of our diatomic elements, so it's going to be I2. So go back and finish our whole reaction. Fluorine plus Ki is going to turn into Kf plus iodine. And we have to go back and balance. We have two I's, so we have two Ki. We have uh, two F's, so we have two Kf. And that would be our finished equation. So in this case, we know fluorine turns into a negative ion, so we know it's going to replace the negative ion in our reactant. In the cases before, nickel becomes a positive ion, so it replaces the positive hydrogen. And aluminum becomes a positive ion, plus three ion, so it's going to replace the positive zinc. And that's how we predict these types of reactions.